Welcome. This is my latest video on the FLIR One Pro thermal camera for iOS and I'll put a link in the description to my playlist and you can find my previous videos there and I'll also put a link to the thermal camera on Amazon and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So in this video I just wanted to take a quick look at the file formats that are created by the app, the FLIR One app. So I took a quick sample photo and video on my iPad and iPhone and I'm going to look at the resolutions and the bit rates and things in this video. So I have the different files here and this may be kind of hard to see but I'll explain what I'm talking about. So the first one is the iPad Pro with MSX on. So I'll look at quick view here. So I have some command line utilities I can use to get the specs on these. So I've installed Image Magic, and I'll just type identify and I'll drag the file over. And I'll hit enter here and this will tell us the resolution. So this photo is at 1440 by 1080. So it's almost 1080p resolution. 1080p is 1920 by 1080. It's just a little narrower. I'll skip down here to the iPhoto one. I'll do the identify in it also. And here we have the same specs. So I think someone might ask if you're using the app on the iPad and the iPhone, do you get the same output? And from my test here, you do get the same output there. There's not an advantage to one or the other. The iPad is nice because it has the big screen and if you don't have great vision like myself, you can see it easier, but the outputted files are the same. So next we have video, clear my screen here. And for that, I'll use FF Probe. Drag that over. We'll take a quick look at that. There we go. And this sample is just my gas stove and I took a thermal video of it. So here we have the video resolution and it is 1080 by 1440. So it's just slightly smaller than 1080p. The bit rate is 975. And then let's take a look at the iPhone video also. And here we have similar results and we have 995. So up here we had 975. So we're getting just under 1,000 kilobits per second on our video rate. And then for the frame rate, we have eight frames per second from the iPad, and we have 8.43 frames per second from the iPhone. So some of these numbers aren't exact because of variable bit rates and things like that, and these are short video clips. But looking at these two, the video is essentially the same. And then the audio, we have 44.1 kilohertz mono, and we have 44.1 kilohertz mono. So we have the same audio on both. And that audio is coming from the iPhone's microphone. So next I have a sample of just the thermal camera here and if I look at it in quick view you can see it's smaller there my screen I'll pull this up so if we turn off MSX and just look at the thermal image and take a photo that's at 640 by 480 so that is smaller and we have video of that too so this is just the video without MSX so it's just the thermal image or thermal video I guess you'd say I'll look at that so here you can see it's 1080 by 1440 and just under 1000 kilobits per second. So if you turn MSX off, your photos will be smaller and lower resolution, but the video will be the same as the MSX version. Then I also just have regular video here and I have regular photo. So the regular video and photo without the thermal on it and no MSX was also the 1440 by 1080. I was just doing that for comparison. I don't know why anyone would use that camera over their phone's camera because it's not as good and it's not made to be as good. So I did one other thing down here. I called this pseudo native 160 by 120 and I'll just play this here. So the resolution of the thermal camera is 160 by 120. So I scaled this down to 160 by 120. So I don't know how accurate this is, but this is kind of my representation of what the thermal image sensor is capturing. Because when you're looking at it in this mode here, it's blown up a lot and it interpolates things so it's bigger than it actually is pulling in. And it overlays it on the image and it makes it more useful that way. Uh, it's easier to see, you know, when it's a small thing, not as useful, not as easy to see. Of course, I can take this here and I can drag it up and it probably looks very similar to uh, the one that I had that was just thermal here. So these probably look very similar. If I can get both of them up here. So actually the one that I outputted natively is a little blockier because QuickTime is smoothing this out a little bit. But you can see it looks pretty similar there. But if it wasn't scaling it up, it would be this tiny little video file. 
So these photos also have GPS information. I'm not going to pull that up because I'd have to blur it out anyway, but that's really handy if you are a contractor, an inspector or something, and you're taking pictures of, and maybe your home later going through the pictures and you forget where you took one, you can get the GPS coordinates there, pull that up in Google Maps, or in, I think the Photos app on the Mac has that built in, and you can see where you took the picture. Now, it's kind of a hassle. You'd probably want to keep better notes or take a picture of the address of the house as your first picture or something. But if you do forget where you were, you can use that information, and you can turn that off. So that's all I'm going to go through in this video. I just wanted to take a quick look at the video files. I don't think there's many other videos or sources of this out there. You might be able to Google this stuff, but I think it can be interesting information for some people because we see resolutions like 160 by 120 in descriptions online for the product, but it's hard to say what that actually looks like or how that's actually outputted. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.